how can one give hope through music and songs? Let's find out. Welcome. Welcome to Word and Productions and I'm Father Sony Sebastian. I'm so excited and I'm so glad we have Tony Melendez, one of the best well-known musician, composer. <laughs> I don't know what else, what are the other adjectives that I should use. <laughs> Tony, welcome to WordNet. Thank you, thank you. It's so beautiful to be here. and uh, I'm so elated. <laughs> I feel honored and, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I knew Father Manning yes. a long, long time ago. And uh, just real quickly, I just want to say uh, a big thank you to him because he was... He's up there. One of the big influences. He's, up here. he's right here. <laughs> yeah, he's, he was a big influence uh, on me being in front of a bigger group. Uh, he took me one time to one of his speeches uh, there at the Anaheim Convention Center, and uh, he said, Tony, just sing one song. So, uh, and I was also a part of the SVD yes, yes. in Riverside, yes, you know, the, yes, as yes. a pre-seminarian. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite, I was in high school still, yes. uh, up for the retreats that they would have for, yes, the, yes. for the guys. Yes. I really, really admire you <laughs> for your patience with yourself. I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> so also for your perseverance and for your faith. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just, again, I did, my heart was very moved when I was younger as a teenager. Uh, and Christ was such a big part of that moment. And, and the, the young group that I was with uh, kind of planted the seed. <laughs> You're an inspiration, Tony. <laughs> You're truly an inspiration. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. I, I don't know what to say. People say, Tony, you're inspiration, you're hope. You uh, are an inspiration, you are I just hope. say thank you. <laughs> you. Yes, you are the hope <coughs> often because uh, the, the joy that we see on your face and the kind of joy and uh, the spirit that re you radiate <laughs> surprises people. <laughs> You know, I know I'm living in a body without any arms. But That's exactly. You live, I live, I should say, uh, very normal and happy. And uh, I'm at times hungry. At times I want to play. At some times I want to sing. Uh, you want to go to the ocean or, you know, you want to go to mass or you, you want to be with your family. I mean, I just have a whole mix of uh, normal things in a, no, in a kind of different body, but... Uh, God doesn't make junk. I <laughs> know. <laughs> never, never. He loves you the way you yes. are. <laughs> yes. But, well, you know, you mentioned that God doesn't make junk. He makes all of us so precious, different. And He uses us. Now, tell us about yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, for, uh, Tony Melendez was born in Nicaragua. That's mm -hmm. where I started. My mm -hmm. mom was from there. My dad from El Salvador, uh, when I was born, a big shock, no arms, due to a medication that was given to my mama. Uh, it was called thalidomide, and they didn't know that it would harm the child. Mm -hmm. So she took this medicine, and when I was born, the two arms were n never grew, and my left foot, a lot of people don't know, was clubbed. It was deformed. So... You know, later on for Tony Melinda to play the guitar, it's like, well, you don't have arms and your foot was messed up. How are you playing the guitar with your feet? You know, so uh, that was something we weren't even knowing way back when I was born. born. They were worried of, can, can I walk? That was the main thing because my foot was twisted and they needed to correct that. But no, you said you didn't have both the arms and one of your feet or one of your leg was twisted or it was not fully grown, how did you then end up or how did you get, uh, how were you able to play the music? How were you <laughs> able to play the guitar yeah. with your feet? Well, you know, I went from a toddler to, you know, elementary to junior high and that's where the music started, you know, coming into my heart. And 
My father was a musician, played the guitar. My mom sang. So I inherited the, the genes, you know, of singing and playing. Uh, not the blue genes, but <laughs> <laughs> the blood genes, the, blood that, genes. the music genes yes. that they had. Uh -huh. And somehow it went all the way to my toes. And once they corrected that little left foot, uh -huh. uh, I was able to make chords and strum the guitar. And it became music. You know, Tony, don't take me wrongly. Have you ever in your life felt that God is partial or has been uh, not just to you? You know, the pe people ask, Tony, are you angry at God? Do you mm -hmm. blame God? Yeah. Uh, how can I blame God? It's, this is a medication, a medicine given by man. Uh, I, I could see how drugs mess up people. Um, now as an adult, as a little kid, I didn't understand. But I have never blamed God ever in my life. You know, I didn't even understand I didn't have arms until the little kid started, he don't have no arms. And then I'm like, I'm not like them. I, I wasn't aware of it until people started telling me there was something different. Uh, but I never hated him. I love God. Uh, even as a little kid, there was never any anger. I never blamed my parents. Uh, it was just a situation is like, well, this is life and I have to deal with it. And that's how I lived my life. You know, I had to figure out how to do things with my feet, not with the hands because I didn't have them. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel that you were, you know, like you, as you, when you were growing up as a kid, uh, as a teenager, were you isolated or uh, segregated or were not uh, welcomed among the rest of the people, rest of the children? Yeah. I had that, you know, uh, he's disabled mm -hmm. from the moment that I was born. And, you know, I think even my, my brothers and sisters, well, he needs a little help. Uh, so they would help me. And, you know, I, I felt that even with them and, you know, some of the other kids in the playground uh, later on in high school, oh, well, you're from Nicaragua. You're Mexican is what they would tell me. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't from Ni um, Mexico. I was from Nicaragua. And I had Salvadorian because yeah. my dad is Salvadorian. So I had the mix of the two. And I, it would bother me because they would say, well, you're Mexican. And I kept saying, I'm not Mexican. <laughs> I'm from Nicaragua and my dad's from El Salvador. So, <laughs> so uh, but I never, uh, I guess, I didn't let it take over my life, okay. the injustice. Uh, if you just feel like they're putting you down and putting you down and putting you down, and you're not strong enough and say, I could take this. Uh, I think that's where the injustice happens even more because we, we tend to hate each other. Mm. And I didn't want to hate the person next to me. They bothered me, yes, but I did not want to hate them. Mm. Yeah. You know, I've, uh, I always, even at the church, in my homilies also, I have said, we all need somebody to bring us even to God. We all need somebody to lean on. You know, the beautiful song as well. Yeah. Uh, the same way, I was going through the internet, you know, about yourself, and I found your brother, Jose, was also very much instrumental. Jose is sitting here in the studio. Um, <laughs> he's the older brother. He's the older brother. And then I'm next. <laughs> he's the one who, he, he also brought you to church, right? Yeah, you know what? We Tell were, us about that. Yeah, we were, of course, we'd go to church as little kids, but when it came to high school, uh, I don't want to go to church anymore. Yeah, leave me alone. You know, the, especially 13, 14, 15, those, those three years, I didn't want to go anymore. And he went on a retreat and was very moved by the retreat and Jesus touched his heart and all the young people there and we had a priest very uh, his name was Father Jerry and he's from this area mm -hmm. the loony yes, I yeah, hope you're watching <laughs> and he encouraged the young people and he brought us to a better place uh, spiritually Jerry by the way Jerry the loony now I think he's retired but yes. he used to be the pastor of Corpus Christi Parish in Corona. Right. Yeah. Yes. Go, ahead, go ahead. So I grew up in Chino. That's yes. where I met him yes. at St. Margaret's. He was working. Uh, he was at the, the parish there. Yes. And, you know, my brother was so moved by the retreat. He came home and he hugged me and he hugged my sisters. And, you know, I know we're Hispanic and that's mm -hmm. you say, well, they always hug. 
But, you know, we were looking at my brother. We're, we're like, I'm 15 years old, and he's hugging me, and, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> are you on drugs? Why, why are you hugging me? I mean, it's not my birthday, you know? <laughs> and he was just so moved and wanted kind of just to share that Christ that he uh -huh. experienced. And I saw that in him, and I saw that in other, other youth that were on the retreat. Because, we, you know, we were in the same youth group. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, you know, because of his uh, life being so changed, I got curious too. And I would say that's a, a strong moment that guided me again towards Christ. You know, I, I had that little nudge where yeah, Jesus yeah, said, yeah. follow your brother. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all need somebody and somebody to nudge us. You know? <laughs> yes. Um, Tony, now, one of the big turning point or event in your life was performing in front of uh, <laughs> Pope John Paul II, now Saint John Paul II. <laughs> Can you share that experience yeah. with us? Let me, uh, let me just back a little bit up. Uh -huh. I want to go back a little bit to uh -huh. high school again. So I'm in high school. I, 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 I joined this, the SVD. SVD, yes. And I, I'm with the guys and we're praying. And I was very moved that evening uh, by Christ and the prayer with just the guys afterwards, after, after the full day of, you know, the, the priest sharing with us and, and all that. Um, I was very moved in prayer that, not that evening. Uh, so that stayed with me for years. And next thing I know, I'm playing for Pope John Paul II. So I'm, I'm going from like 15 to 16 year old to 25. 25. And spiritually, I'm going back to that moment where this is so beautiful. Christ moved me so powerful, powerfully back then. And now here I am singing for Pope John Paul II. 6,000 youth behind me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm singing a song called uh, Never Be the Same. Mm -hmm. And I see the Pope in front of me. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, don't mess up. This is live TV. <laughs> That's all they're going to remember. Don't mess up. Yes. And uh, the song finishes and the Pope stands up with the youth and the standing ovation. And next thing I know, he's jumping into the crowd and he's coming towards me. And I didn't hear it that day, but he jumped into the audience. But before that, he says, I have to kiss him. The Pope says that and you could barely hear it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you listen real closely, you, you hear, I have to kiss him. And that's what he came to do uh, where I was. Sit, sitting playing the guitar was amongst the youth and when he came close we shared with a kiss on each other's right cheeks and uh, it was seen around the world and again spiritually I'm like my eyes are all full of water the Pope just kissed me I'm trembling uh, I'm nervous I'm excited uh, it, it, it's unbelievable in my heart it's like this just happened and so I figured it's over. Finally, I could rest. You know, the, it's gonna, he's going back to the big stage. And he gets back up there and he goes, Tony, Tony, <laughs> in his Polish accent, <laughs> yeah. and started sharing more words. None of this is supposed to happen. And finally, you know, he says to me, my wish for you is, it, is that you continue giving hope to hope. others. And I, I will never forget that. <laughs> and you have been doing that. Yeah. You have been giving hope through your music, yeah. through your life, through your testimony. To a lot of people, Tony. Yeah, you know, I just pray that you know musically I could play the song that maybe you at least like, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, or uh, maybe you don't have to like it, just enjoy it, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful. <laughs> we are all blessed, as I mentioned, you know, but some people are, you know, God sometimes I I think sometimes God is a little partial. <laughs> I I envy the, you. Not only just you, anyone who can sing and play. <laughs> as, a, as a seminarian, I tried, <laughs> and I found that this is not my cup of tea. <laughs> uh, and so whenever, because I don't know which note to <laughs> land or to begin. Right. <laughs> so whenever somebody sings, whenever, play, whenever someone plays, it's always so wonderful, <laughs> and I envy them. Oh. And so I envy you, and much more than that, the kind of dedication and the perseverance that you had 
even with the physical limitations that you are able to <laughs> praise God. Anyway, we're going to yes. take a short break. I know I'm, I've been talking too much. I wonder, I, I need to be listening to you rather than <laughs> talking more. I, I have a lot of lot more questions and things to ask you. Let's, we're going to take a short break, please. Okay. Please, I hope you are enjoying this wonderful, uh, you know, sharing with Tony. Stay with us. Don't go away. We have a lot more to share with you. Do you want to fall in love with God? I'm sure we all want to. The book of Psalms contains the directions. Thousands of years ago, people like you and me talked to God out of the depths of their hearts, revealing an intimate love. Psalms are the expression of the faith in God by people around 3,000 years ago. God was not a mere abstract creator, but was present, involved, and a real person of power and emotions. Now, when we read or listen to the Psalms, we can know the intensity of this love. Entering into the influence of the Psalms, we can find a path to know and love God. To know more about the Psalms, you should get a copy of Father Mike Manning's booklet, The Psalms. It will help you to understand the 150 Psalms better as he has categorized them. He uses the technique of acts, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Get your copy today and know the categories. Learn to pray with the Psalms. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also get it through our website. Get your copy today. Welcome back. We are having this wonderful sharing with Tony Melendez. And uh, he shared with us in the last segment about his own personal life. So also the moment of that personal encounter with mm -hmm. the Pope John Paul II, now Saint now John Paul II, yes. <laughs> which in a way kind of transformed and changed your life as well. It did. You know, uh, I had a priest come up to me uh, in my travels because that moment sent me around the world. And he comes up all excited and he goes, Tony, you realize you're a relic. And I'm a relic. I'm not dead yet is what I yeah. thought in my head, you know. <laughs> and, you know, it, but at the same time, it's like, wow, what an honor, you know, to even be considered a relic. And, you know, when a pope kisses you, and I don't understand it totally. Uh, if they said if a saint touches you while they're alive, somehow you're, <laughs> we'll have to research it, Father. Yeah. You know, and I, I was honored so much, you know, because back then it was just John Paul II, you know, Pope. Yes. And he wasn't a saint yet. And no. I never dreamed that one day I could say, well, I was kissed by a saint. And, you know, I've had many people come up to this right cheek here mm -hmm. and want to kiss that cheek because that's the one he kissed. And I, I've seen him seven, I got to see him seven different times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and mainly because of the World Youth Days. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few times there in Rome, mm -hmm. as my travels took me all over mm -hmm, the place. Mm -hmm. And I love the way people were changed uh, just with his presence. Yeah. It was like he knew, he, it was like he knew you, but you never met before. <laughs> uh, he had that special connection yeah, yeah, with yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And there's a million people yeah. out there, you know, and, but you, you're sitting there and you're, you're saying, he pointed at me, and, but there's a million people there, but you're yeah. saying, and, and people felt that it was right to them. And, yeah. and it was. Individually it, and personally. It, it was pretty powerful. He had that gift to be able to connect that much with a million people and one person walked away, he was pointing at me, you know? <laughs> so, it was, and you know, he took his time. He went to people, he shook hands, he it would embrace them, he'd let them reach and, you know, kind of take his hand. Uh, he, you know, I miss him, honestly, yeah. just his energy, his- Were could, you able to anytime meet Pope Francis? Because of the World Youth Days, I've gotten to see the okay. three, three popes now. Uh -huh. Uh, Have you ever met Pope him? Benedict first? Benedict. Uh -huh. I didn't get to meet him, uh -huh. and then uh, Pope Francis. Because of the World Youth Days, I've sang at them, mm. um, and they're on the big stage, and I'm off to one side singing. Yeah. So I was fairly so, close. Okay, okay. But I didn't get to meet or embrace or yeah. 
share a kiss like I did yeah, with John yeah, Paul II. Yeah. Now, um, Tony, that one event, of course, has a lot of uh, signature, life-changing moment in your life, and then you become, like, immediately you become much more popular and known than before. Mm -hmm. And you, you started traveling. Uh, you are also getting that, so don't take me again wrongly, mm -hmm. you get the public adulation and the praise yeah. and acceptance. Yeah, the fame. Yeah, the <laughs> fame. Has any time those fame gotten into your, I know, yeah. head and has it, has it yeah. in a way kind of changed you in any other way? Yeah, I mean, that's where you really need accountability, uh, like another person to help. Uh, I'm glad that my brother Jose has traveled worldwide with me. You know, as brothers, you know, we could, <laughs> what's wrong with you? What, yeah, it's yeah. going to your head yeah, already, you, yeah. know, you know, and he could bring me back to reality. Um, but I would say more than anything, it's helped me grow in my faith. Mm -hmm. uh, as a Catholic, I got to see high church to Pope level. Um, I've gotten to see the charismatic world mm -hmm. because they invite me to the conference conferences. Mm -hmm. And I'm new, you know, the, to the charismatic, you know, at mm -hmm. that time. And I'm seeing people slaying in the spirit. And I'm seeing yeah. people, you know, doing things that aren't normal to the, the, to the eye. Um, and not just that. I, I invited to Marian conference, Eucharistic mm -hmm. conferences. Um, anything, any Catholic kind of entity from a retreat to a conference to... Uh, to mass, um, I, I got to see it in all kinds of different levels. Conventions. Yeah, I, and, and, and it, it's been very, very beautiful. I've seen adoration done. It's very similar, but some people do it even bigger and uh, more musical, and, and others are just very quiet and just take your time and, con you know, just you in a room and with Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been on, on an island saying mass on the sand. Um, you know, where maybe some people have never got to experience mm -hmm. that because they don't live near that or, you, you know, it's not even available. Uh, so I, I've gotten to see our, our Catholic faith in a big way where I never dreamed. Uh, and I really pray and hope that, you know, the faint part, uh, I always have someone to kind of slap me. <laughs> okay, Tony, come back to earth. This is reality. This is where we need to be mm -hmm. and not following the fame. Mm -hmm. What are, how do you pray? How do I pray? Uh, I have several ways to pray. Of course, you know, you pull out, you know, the rosary and just the beads. I don't hold the beads because uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I count my toes. Count toes. I got 10 toes, so I count my toes. <laughs> um, so uh, that's, you know, a simple way. But my favorite way is my guitar. Yes. I take the guitar and I just will make up music, whatever comes out as prayer. And it's not a song. It is a prayer to Christ and I don't like to do it in front of people I will just it just comes from your heart it's just me in my bedroom with Christ uh, or an empty church or sometimes I'm left alone uh, at some of the concert places uh, while they're getting things ready and I'll pray that way mm -hmm. I know you wanted to be a priest I wanted to be a priest yeah <laughs> I did. I want to be one of you guys, the SVDs. So I, know. I was so proud. And, you know, you guys helped me. There was letters. Uh, Joe, Father Joe, Miller, Joe was, Miller was still with us back then. and I live with him, by the way. <laughs> oh. But, you know, Tony, you have done much more than a priest could do. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's so much. Everyone does, really, everyone. I, you know, I feel I wanted to be a priest. And you guys took me everywhere with you, like Father Manny took me into the prisons. So I've gotten to go into places because of priests, bishops, and this and that, uh, because of invitation that I probably never would have been to before. I wouldn't go because I'm not going to go there, you know. Uh, but because of Tony, come with me, I need you, um, I went. I All think right. you, have touched, uh, you have touched the hearts and lives of more people that... I don't think I have ever. I've been a priest for now. This is the thirtieth year. <laughs> um, I'm, I've been to many countries. Thank God, or I thank the Lord for <laughs> that. Uh, been in different positions, never asked for, but 
the Lord has been gracious. But uh, I'm definitely sure <laughs> there are so many people who think of you and thank the Lord for you <laughs> because mm. you have definitely touched them and have brought a new hope. <laughs> you know, we all need that hope. And, yes. you know, one thing that I want to, as a priest, you know, if I ever made it, you yeah. know, um, is to be able to hold that Eucharist. And what I see uh, around the world as a Catholic, what brings us together, is the what brings the Catholics together globally, yeah. worldwide, is that beautiful Eucharist. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, for you to lift it with your hands and hold him, uh, I mean, I envy and I, I, I feel honored. You say, you, say you, you, you haven't touched many. Well, through that alone, hundreds of thousands of people have come to communion just through uh, your help of dis distribution and giving of Christ. And that's the beauty of being a priest. And the Eucharist has uh, the power of the divine, which is, whew, I, I wish I could place him in my son's heart or my daughter's heart, the ones that don't want to go to church. I mean, sometimes they're the ones I, I wish I could reach. And, you know, the, they're close to me. The closest one, they don't, sometimes they don't want church. They don't want Christ. Uh, and it kills me. It kills me. It, you know, there's many families suffering, saying, well, so-and-so doesn't. My, my husband, my, my son, my, my daughter, my, my wife, someone doesn't come. Uh, and I wish they would. <laughs> I Thank wish you. they would. <laughs> you have enlightened. You have brought a lot of, a new lease of hope <laughs> to a lot of people who will be watching this show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for being who you are <laughs> and what you are. Thank you. I'm sure all of you enjoyed this, listening to Tony, his life, his journey, and so also his mission of bringing hope, hope of the Lord to everybody. Tony, keep <laughs> doing what you're doing oh, and bring you, more <laughs> and more, bring hope to more and more people <laughs> and uh, let's keep the torch. Yeah. Not just me, all of us. All of us. All of us. All of us. It takes all of us. Yes. <laughs> Let, let's keep the torch burning. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Thank you and bless you all. So the Christ sanctify me, body of Christ save me, blood of Christ inebriate me, water from the side of Christ wash me, passion of Christ strengthen me, oh my Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me never to be separated.